Okay, uh, welcome to today's webinar <coughs> on CPWR's new Construction Safety and Health Network. My name is Jessica Bunting, and I'm with the Research to Practice team here at CPWR. Uh, you may recognize me from uh, being the host on past webinars, but today I will also be giving a presentation on um, how we created this new online network and how it can be used. But first, I'd like to go over just a few logistical things. First, if you are having trouble hearing through your computer speakers at any point, we recommend calling in using your phone instead. Um, the call in information can be found in any of the emails that you received from WebEx or on the event info tab in the upper left hand corner of your screen. We will take some time at the end of today's presentation to answer questions. Um, you can enter questions at any time in the Q&A box during the presentation. Um, we'll do our best to answer all of them at the end. My colleague Eileen Beatty will be helping me out by moderating this portion, so please try to address your questions either to everyone or directly to Eileen um, if you prefer to keep your question private. And finally, uh, today's webinar will be recorded. The link to that will be emailed to everyone along with a PDF of the slides and related resources following the event. So with that, I will go ahead and get started. So this online network came about in response to a problem of reach within the construction industry. There are many individuals and organizations concerned about improving safety and health in the industry, and each one has a network of intermediaries and end users that they are able to reach. So these individual networks allow us to disseminate information not only to direct contacts, but also to secondary and tertiary contacts through them. However, each individual or organizational network can only reach so far. And given the decentralized nature of the construction industry, when individual stakeholders and groups only operate within their own networks, opportunities to share valuable information with our target audiences are lost. Additionally, multiple individuals or organizations may be working on the same topics, hazards, or efforts, but if they are not in each other's networks, opportunities for collaboration are never identified. It's based on our firsthand knowledge and experience with dissemination challenges in the industry, CPWR began to ask, how can we bring together these various stakeholder networks so that they know what one another is doing, have better access to new information and materials, can easily share that information and materials with their own networks, and are exposed to new opportunities for collaboration and building sustainable relationships. So obviously this is a very rudimentary drawing, but essentially we wanted to go from what you see um, as disconnected networks on the left to the big interconnected network on the right. And figuring out how to get there was a bit of a process. So what we did was uh, create sort of this iterative feedback process over a few years. We first introduced the concept of the Safety and Health Partnership Network at our first annual R2P seminar and partnership workshop in 2015. Um, and fortunately, we had an audience at that uh, R2P seminar that was sort of made up of exactly the groups that we wanted to engage. So we used that 2015 meeting to ask the question of how to improve connectivity within and between networks and offered a proposed solution of creating a network of partnerships along with some type of online mechanism to access that network. We didn't define the specifics of what it would look like, how it would operate, or who would join, um, but we used this opportunity to solicit feedback on the concept and then use their input to refine the concept, building a more fleshed out plan. So that initial plan just consisted of two main components. It was actually using our existing website, cpwr.com, as well as a LinkedIn page um, in order to spotlight uh, new materials and new partnerships. And the network members were considered to be partnerships, not individuals. So the idea was sort of a network of networks. We knew that these might not be the platforms we ended up using, but we moved forward with creating the LinkedIn page and the cpwr.com page in order to get feedback. At this stage, we also began sharing the concept and, and platform at a variety of other meetings, such as with the Ocean Construction Alliances, um, with union representatives, contractor representatives, and informally soliciting feedback from those that we shared it with. So while that was not as systematic a way to collect feedback, it helped us gauge stakeholder reaction and ensure that we were continuing to move in the right direction. 
So then in 2016, you can see that we held um, another R2P seminar. And at this seminar, we had an entire workshop devoted to the idea of networks and the creation of an online safety and health network. So through various breakout activities, we asked attendees to consider what their current networks look like, who might be missing from them, and how joining the safety and health network might be beneficial. We also asked questions about functionality, um, such as are LinkedIn and CPWR good platforms, and how can we make this useful? What we ended up finding out at that stage is that while we had made progress on the concept, we were not yet on the right track. So we got a, a couple of uh, pieces of feedback that really changed the trajectory of how we were going. One of the key things that kept coming up in our conversations was this idea of time constraints. Um, so we heard repeatedly that people are being bombarded with information, and they individually have preferred ways for sharing and receiving that information. So while some said that postings and notices through LinkedIn would work, others said that they would not participate if LinkedIn was the only option. So our takeaway was that we needed to come up with an approach that would provide a variety of options for participating and receiving information, and that approach should not create a time burden. Users should be able to engage in a manner that works best for them and their organization and fits with what they're already doing. We also heard that it should be open to any individual or organization with an interest in improving construction safety and health and not just be limited to partnerships um, so that we create a network that reaches a broad and diverse construction audience. And finally, uh, workshop attendees emphasize the need to make interaction with the network flexible. We heard that some users will want to use the network to push their materials and products out. Others will use it to find new information. Others will just want to access a directory to find and connect with the researchers or stakeholders with a shared safety and health focus or concern. So based on what we learned, we realized that it would be best to create a whole new platform that would be more flexible and meet the different and sometimes conflicting needs of our target audiences. So following that 2016 seminar, we updated our plan. Um, but before we moved forward with actually developing the resource, we created a mock-up um, of what the web pages would look like and reached out to our workshop participants to provide additional feedback and make sure we were going in the right direction through a small web-based meeting. For the most part, everyone at that meeting agreed that we were on the right track and provided some additional suggestions for both implementing the network and making it easy to use, including making it mobile friendly and keeping the site fully accessible without a login. So after that meeting, CPWI then went through the process of engaging a developer and building the new site. And at the time of our 2017, <coughs> excuse me, at the time of our 2017 R2P seminar, we were still in the development phase, which gave us an opportunity to present on the network one more time. <coughs> the end result of this iterative feedback and development process is a network that aims to formalize the connections between and collective reach of individuals and organizations interested in advancing safety and health in the construction industry by creating a central way to effectively disseminate information materials and solutions to a broader, broader audiences, um, increasing the capacity for taking action and affecting change, encouraging greater coordination among key interest groups and stakeholders, and sharing innovations and increasing responsiveness to emerging, emerging hazards. So in April of this year, just a couple of months ago, um, we went live with safeconstructionnetwork.org. At this stage, we've done what we would consider just a very soft launch. Um, so at our 2017 seminar, we gave attendees the opportunity to sign up in advance on a paper form. Um, so we have about 60 people um, who pre-registered who are now part of the uh, existing online network. Um, but we are just now beginning our efforts to promote and do an actual launch of the site. So now I am going to switch over to the live site, do a quick run through. <laughs> okay. All right, hopefully everyone can see my screen. Um, so the site consists of three main pieces of interactive functionality, which you can see here on the homepage, uh, search, collaborate, and share. 
you also have on the home page some featured content, so it's very easy for someone to just go to the site and see what it has been newly posted. Uh, going back up to search here, this refers to the ability to search through different content by type, topic, and keyword. Our goal is to populate this site with content from a wide variety of organizations and individuals. Um, members and site users can easily share this uh, posted content either however they want. So you can take the information and incorporate it into an article, um, link to it on your website, or you can easily share it using the social media and email buttons down below the article, individual articles. Tied into this content um, is, you know, the, how we get the content is through the share functionality. Um, anyone can submit content, so going back to this page, you can see um, in the, the first couple pieces, one is from NFPA, another is from CPWR, we have some NIOSH materials up here, OSHA materials, um, so we're looking for um, materials from a wide variety of organizations and different types of organizations. Um, so anyone can share content, you do not have to be a member. All you have to do is go to the share content button and then fill out this form. Uh, as a NIOSH uh, research center, we do have to go through a vetting process. So when you submit the content, it'll be sent to our team here. Uh, we will review it and if it passes the vetting process, uh, it will be posted uh, online. And the third piece, okay, going back to the home page, the third piece um, not tied into the content is uh, collaborate, and this is the functionality that is um, less about pushing the information out or sharing information and more about connecting with one another. So um, the network directory allows users to search members, again, based on area of expertise or interest, um, role or organization or keyword, um, and members can have either public or private contact information. Um, so you can see here um, most people uh, have public information, but there are a few where it says click to contact me through CPWR. Um, if contact information is included, then anyone on the site, again, you don't have to be a member, anyone on the site can access this, can get your information, and um, can contact you about possible collaborative efforts. Um, if you keep your information private, um, then they'll send an email to CPWR and we will act as a middleman. Um, another option for finding partners is to simply submit an open call for collaborators, which you can see that option in the box here. Um, it also shows up just under contact us. Um, so you would just submit sort of what you're looking for. And then we will either put a post on the site or we can potentially do some uh, outreach offline if necessary to help find you the partners that you're looking for. In addition to those three main components or pieces of interactive functionality, we also just have a couple other things on here. Um, that there's an about the network with uh, FAQs. There are some resources that um, are just up here in a more permanent, easy to find uh, fashion as opposed to the searchable content page. And um, I also want to show you the create a profile section. Um, so like I've been saying, you do not have to have a profile, you don't have to be a network member to access the full functionality of the site. However, there are some benefits to creating a profile. Um, First, members who create a profile are then listed as members in the network directory, so then they can be identified as possible collaborators through the site. Um, the second benefit is that the member profiles include customizable email notifications, so you can decide uh, how you would like to receive email updates, how often, and then you can also select the topics that you're interested in hearing about. Um, so that you can be notified when something new gets on the site without ever having to go check the site. Um, the third benefit is also 
this associated links section. Uh, we set it up so that um, users can add either their social media links or their organization websites or whatever website they would like to choose. So um, that speaks to the people who wanted more interaction through social media. Um, through our feedback process, and it also provides a way to sort of just passively promote your organization or, or your website just by having a profile. So that is pretty much the site. I encourage you to go check it out in more depth and uh, be a member. Going back to the presentation, um, obviously the main outcome or a result of this process of going through all these different meetings and seeking feedback at every stage of the project is that we have now have an online construction safety and health network that directly reflects the needs, desires, communication preferences, and constraints of our target audiences. However, we did also uh, learn some additional lessons along the way. So the primary lesson learned from this project is that buy-in from one's target audiences early on in the process is really crucial. Um, if CPWR had created the network and online platform on our own, it would have looked completely different and it would likely not have been useful to our intended audience. As you saw, we came a long way from our original concept that relied on CPWR.com and LinkedIn. Um, some more specific lessons learned about what our audience wanted in a safety and health network and the associated online platform included that they wanted an inclusive network. Um, they found our initial concept too constricting and advised we opened up the network to anyone who is interested in advancing construction safety and health. We also found that uh, we needed a design that uh, met their needs rather than forcing them to use an existing online platform that they had already opted not to participate in or that had too many requirements. Um, so initially, we actually thought that by using an existing platform, we were going to be making it easier on everyone, but we learned that that was not the case. Um, we also heard repeatedly that access needs to be easy and uh, quick. It needs to recognize time constraints and competing demands. Our audience has suggested that we make the site accessible without a login and password for ease of use um, and so that they wouldn't have to remember yet another login. Um, they also suggested that we offer multiple ways to access the information, um, so the site itself, social media, or emails. Um, and then we include simple buttons for sharing information uh, that you saw when I showed you the content. And finally, a lesson learned in developing online resources in general is that while there may be great suggestions for functionality from potential users or even the developers that you work with, you should keep in mind the staff time and resources that you'll have available after the launch so that you'll be able to maintain it. And with that, I will go ahead and take any questions. Eileen, I think you may be on mute. Can you hear me now? I wasn't on mute. Yes. I can okay. hear you now. Um, so we had one question that talked about how we could reach uh, contractors, you know, the smaller and mid-sized contractors and how we were going to get this important information out to them. And so, Jessica, do you want to take a minute to address that? Sure. Um, so we have a, a couple mechanisms that, you know, we're always uh, trying to reach small and medium-sized businesses. So uh, we are intending to do targeted outreach to groups that we already know of to encourage them to use this within their networks. And we also have our uh, upcoming seminar for 2018 this summer. Um, that we will be able to do some additional presenting and get more feedback on how to really push this out to our tar target audiences. Okay. Sorry, we were having some technical difficulties with the Q&A here. <laughs> Sorry about that. So, so Jessica said we're, we're going to be continuing to um, find different ways that we can reach out to the target audience, and we hope that if there are people on the phone 
that within their own networks um, have these small and mid-sized contractors, that they'll use this um, new online tool as a way to get the information out. So I apologize for our technical difficulty. Um, the next question is, when content is through the vetting process and posted, is the person who submitted it notified? Uh, and the answer to that would be uh, that, yes, we uh, will happily notify the original submitter that uh, their post is up so that they know and can begin sharing it with their audience as well. Okay. Um, the next question is, are we going to allow commercial content? I, I don't believe we are. Um, I, yeah, um, I mean, can you, yeah our, our intent is really to get um, research projects products out and materials that are open to everyone in, in, in the construction audience, so things that, you know, something that's commercially available would have a price associated with it, and that's really not our intent here. Um, it's to make information and resources that are readily accessible to anyone available. But, you know, I, this is a very new product, so we're, um, we'll be evaluating things as they go through. Um, the next question is, how many people visit this site? Well, since it has just launched and we have not done any actual promotion until today, um, we have not pulled any metrics or determined how many people have visited thus far. Um, so I, I don't have an actual answer to that question at this stage. Um, yeah. So, um, and then the next question is, um, so is this a website available to anyone? Um, in, yes, as I mentioned, so there are a lot of benefits to becoming a network member, but even becoming a member is open to anyone who is interested, um, and also the website in general is completely public, so anyone can access the information on there and anyone can submit content um, to be considered for posting. Okay, um, the next question is can, um, maybe get a copy of the present presentation. And I will, this is being recorded, um, and it will be posted on YouTube. I'll send out an email with both the recorded presentation and a PDF of the slides. Okay, and um, is this just for the construction industry? Um, the goal for this is that it was is a construction industry product uh, or platform, but uh, there are no restrictions, and we do have overlap in with some other industries um, such as mining. Um, so I, you know we're not restricting it, but the content will be construction focused. Um, and then once we set up our profiles, will we automatically become a member? No fee. Question mark. Yes, there is no fee. Um, this is not like a professional membership where you would have to pay an annual fee or do. It is uh, completely free as are all of our resources. Okay. Construction is a big field. Is there a particular subset that this is best for, home builders, large construction, or across the range? Our intention is that it will encompass uh, the full spectrum and range of type and size of construction. Obviously, not all of the content will be appropriate for everyone, but that's why we have um, both the search functionality built in, so you, you can search by um, keyword. Um, so if you just were interested in residential construction, you could search that way. Um, we also have the email functionality so that you can select the topics that you're interested in. Um, so if not everything is applicable to you, you can pick just what you want to hear about. Okay. Um, will your targeted campaigns include reaching out to skilled trades or labor unions like pipe fitters, carpenters, et cetera? Uh, they, they absolutely will. Um, we've already in, been in discussion with some uh, labor unions about this. Um, we will be promoting it um, absolutely and hopefully getting uh, content from unions as well. Um, is there a linkage in the network to BLS data and data analysis? Uh, there is certainly BLS data and uh, data analysis in reports that have been posted to the network and um, that will be posted to the, to the network. And if I could just add, um, CPWR's data center just released their chart book and that was one of the items posted. So there will be 
you know, and they do quarterly data reports, and we'll always make sure those are accessible through the network. What plans, uh, let's see, what plans do you have for continuing improvement and evaluation of youth? Well, we'll be continuing to, to re, as the network gets up and running, um, as we hear feedback from our end users, if adjustments are needed, we'll, we'll make those adjustments. We're not planning any adjustments in the short term because we want to see how things work. We're going to be tracking the metrics. Um, we have an R2P seminar uh, scheduled for June, and we're going to be bringing this full circle and bringing it back to the original audience and people that we, we um, first proposed this idea to. Um, we've discussed possibly having an online survey at some point so people can also provide feedback, and there's a, a way that um, you can reach out to us through the website and provide us with ongoing feedback. So if you see something that doesn't work or have suggestions, we'd welcome that. Yeah, certainly. Just uh, you can submit that through the contact to us on the website, but also um, you can shoot me an email directly if you have feedback uh, today after reviewing the site. I think the majority of the rest of these are comments, which are very kind. Thank you for the positive feedback. Um, but are there any more um, questions? at this time? All right. Well, if you have any questions after the webinar, feel free to email me. Um, and we hope you check out the site and enjoy it. Thank you.